Hello, good day everyone. So welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the Free Mind. By the way, I am Joe Brand. So to those who are my new subscribers, no, thank you so much for watching and for for your likes, for your comments. So for today's vlog is I'll be explaining to you our lesson number three in the subject of art appreciation. So I hope you will watch this video till the end. Okay, so our lesson three will be talking about the elements of visual arts and performing arts. Okay, so when you talk about visual art, we'll be talking about uh, things that we perceive with our eyes. But when you talk about elements of performing arts, we are talking about arts that involves execution, that involves man's skills. Okay, so let's start discussing about the elements of visual arts. So the artist utilizes the mediums and puts together elements to create a work of art. Yes, uh, I already discussed about what is a work of art. It involves your imagination and your skill. So the medium is the physical means through which he can come up with a work of art. So the medium or the material so the artist uses a lot of mediums, a lot of materials to come up with a work of art. And the element of art can be achieved through the use of a particular medium. So to create a color, for example, the artist uses and mixes pigments. So we have elements of visual arts. We have the line, the color, the texture, the space, the form, the volume, light and shadow. So we'll be talking about that one, one, one by one. So let's start about the line. So as what I have this discussed, you talk about visual arts. Um, every line has its own meaning. So line is an important element at the disposal of every artist. Through the lines, as in painting or sculpture, the artist represents figures and forms. So line is very important for an artist. Line gives the artist a good representation of his figures and forms. So lines always have direction. So when you talk about line, it shows direction. They are always moving. Lines as used in any work of art may either be straight or curved. So when a man is in motion, he bends forward. When he encounters an opposing forces, he braces against it. So the greater the opposing force, the sharper will be the angle of his body and the straighter the line will be. Therefore, we can say that a line, it gives direction. Whether you are standing up, you are moving, you are taking action. So man has learned that certain emotional states find expression in definite positions. He associates these emotions with lines. Okay, so as what I have discussed again, we talk about visual arts. Their main concern are with the feelings and the emotions of the viewers or the readers. Right? So he associate these emotions. He associate these emotions through a, through a line. So a straightness, a straight line, or a straight line like that, no? Line is the basic framework of many forms, but it lacks softness and flexibility. So the straight line moves in one direction only. It may either be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. So when you talk about horizontal lines, it means it gives serenity, horizontal from the horizon, right? Are lines of repose and serenity, peaceful. So when you talk about vertical lines, it denotes action. If you are standing up, it denotes action. Diagonal lines, it suggests action, life, and movement. Diagonal like this, no? Or like that. Okay, so the jug lines, when you use jug lines, it expresses energy, violence, conflict, and struggle. So in painting, there should be an organic unity of lines to produce balance and symmetry, proportion of lengths and width and rhythm. So that is very important for an artist, no? So if an, the artist should know the, the meaning of each lines. 
so that he can capture the emotion or the emotional response of the viewer. So the next is the color. And as what, we, as what we've known, color uh, gives an aesthetic appeal. Of all the elements of visual arts, color has the most aesthetic appeal. You talk about aesthetic, it gives beauty, right? So delight in color is a universal human characteristic. Color is a property of light. When light goes out, color goes with it. So there are three dimensions of color. We have the U, the value, and the intensity. So the U is the dimension of color that gives color its name. So we have the primary U's, the blue, red, and yellow. The secondary U, we have the orange, the green, and violet. Therefore, when we say that's color yellow, maybe uh, you are talking about the, the U, the primary U. When you say that the color of the object is orange, you're also talking about the secondary U. Okay, so you give the color its name. How about the value? The value refers to the lightness or the darkness of color. We talk about value, we also have the so-called the tents and the shades. Right? It refers to the darkness or the lightness of a color. The tents are values above normal when you say the shades are values below the normal okay so the tense is more is darker compared to its shades okay when you talk about intensity intensity refers to its brightness or darkness it gives your color strength okay so color plays and color plays an important role in the work of an artist yes because as humans, when we, saw, when we see good colors, no, we are able to appreciate the meaning of it. When you use bright colors, when you use dark colors, it really gives meaning to the audience or the viewers. So painters use one color to balance and enrich the others and to awaken the emotional responses of the viewer. Although painting is known as the art of color, Color is also important in sculpture and architecture. Yes, color is very important for painting, sculpture, and architecture. So there are two kinds of color harmonies. We have the related color harmonies and contrasted color harmonies. When you say it's related, meaning it is monochromatic or adjacent. Monochromatic meaning monochromatic chromatic harmonies are the simplest and easiest to use something in common so it is very easy for them to agree so when you say about contrasted color harmonies colors which lie directly opposites each other in the color circle are called complementary colors so directly opposite means that colors are known to have varied psychological and emotional connotations so if you are an artist you have to be careful choosing the right color for your artwork for your work of art because it it gives um psychological and emotional connotations so next is the texture when you say texture texture is an element that deals more directly with the sense of touch so texture is best appreciated when an object is felt with the hands. So when you, when you talk about texture, it is good when we felt it with the hands. Texture is very real to the sculpture and architecture, yes, because wood, stone, brick, concrete, and metal feel differently. So meaning when you use texture in your sculpture, in your architecture, it is well appreciated because this object for example, the wood, the stone, brick, concrete, and metal, they feel differently. So to the painter, texture is an illusion. Why? Because you cannot, you cannot touch the texture or the, you cannot touch the, the painting or the texture. So that's why for the painter, texture is an illusion. He must make an object look the way it would feel when one touches it. Okay? So we also have the, the painting no that is very real no that's why the painter should know how to to give um a good texture no, in painting so last is the perspective i mean perspective 
Perspective deals with the effect of distance upon the appearance of object. There are two kinds of perspective. We have the linear and the aerial perspective. So to get the depth or the distance, an artist uses both a linear and aerial perspective. So when you say about linear perspective, it is the representation of an appearance of distance by means of converging lines. When you say about aerial perspective, it is the representation of relative distance of object from gradations of tone and color. Okay, so it depends if you're going to use the linear or the aerial perspective. Space. So in painting, as in architecture, space is of great importance. So painting does not deal with space directly. It represents space only on a two-dimensional surface. Sculpture involves very little space, relationship, or perception of space. So space is very important in architecture. So in painting, it does not deal with space directly, but because it only shows two-dimensional surface. The form. So form applies to the overall design of a work of art. So form directs the movement of the eyes. So it describes the structure or shape of an object. So every kind of form has its own aesthetic effect. All the visual arts are concerned with the form. So sculpture and architecture deal with three-dimensional form, while the painting deals with the two-dimensional form. So you talk about form, there are, different, there are types of forms, right? We have the regular forms are those whose parts are related to one another. The irregular forms are those whose parts are not related to one another. The centralized forms consist of a number of secondary forms clustered to produce a dominant central and parent form. Okay, so these forms are ideal as freestanding structure. Linear forms are arranged sequentially in a row or series forms along a line. Radical forms are compositions of linear form that extend outward from the central form in a radical manner. The grid forms are modular forms whose relationship are regulated by three-dimensional grids. How about the volume? So the volume is, the term volume refers to the amount of space occupied in three dimensions. It is therefore refers to solidity or thickness. Volume is the primary concern of architect because a building always encloses space. The sculpture is also concerned with the volume because his figures actually occupy space and can be observed from any direction, correct? In painting, in painting, volume is an illusion because the surface of the canvas is flat. The painter can only suggest volume. Okay, so I think that's the end no, of my discussion. But the, to summarize everything, when you talk about the elements of visual arts, visual arts are arts that we perceive with our eyes. So we have this, the painting, the sculpture, and the architecture. So painting, when you talk about a work of art, a work of art involves your imagination and your skill. So the artist is very concerned about your feelings and emotions. And we have the elements of visual arts. We have the line, the color, the texture, perspective, space, form, volume, light, and shadow. All these things, they, they are considered as very important for visual artists. And every element of visual art gives a lot of emphasis. It gives direction. It gives meaning. And it played an important role in the work of art of an artist. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you are learning from all the videos that I've posted. This is a very long discussion, so I'll be posting another one for this lesson. And that would be uh, lesson 3.1 for art appreciation. So this is my first video and I'll be sending again our next video. And I'll be, I'll be discussing about the elements of performing arts. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again for my next video blog. Thank you and God bless you.